Hello folks, welcome back. We're on the one, the only Hobo Tom, and I'm here finally back in my normal schedule of things, which I'll get to a little bit later. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Wrestling. That's the only, well, one of the few reasons, well, what, yeah. Kind of the main reason why I'm here. And again, as always, I'd like to send some shout-outs. Access Point and all. Yes, that is right. Whatever I said, I think you either mirrored it or agreed with me. So therefore, sir, you're definitely, like me, superior. And if you two would get your own little shout out. Again, find me on the Discord, chat with me when I do my live streams, which I'll get into a little bit today. And um, email, although I check my email very infrequently. I do have to get a little bit better at that, though. Eh, what can you do about that? So let's go right to Monday Night Raw. I want to see if I can make this a record three-hour show, compress it into hopefully 20 minutes or less. Who knows? Um, so Raw starts off. Man, I, it's been a while since I've done a video like this. So I'm feeling happy. Normally, I've been so pressed for time. It's been live stream, live stream, live stream. Now I can kind of chillax. And the temperature is going down. My cat's on my couch, though. so And I have my iced tea because I'm being healthy for 40 days. Less than that now. So with all that being said, let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Starts off with The Miz and Bobby Lashley recap. You know, that's not going to end well. Um, Sheamus comes in. And then, so we did, it was just a bunch of recaps. They did, like, the talking for 15 minutes. That is my one pet peeve with Raw. You don't get to your first wrestling match real until 15 minutes in. What I do like, though, they're giving you a little bit of taste. A little smidgen of a taste. A preview of the show of what's to come. So that's good. Having a 15-minute recap of what happened... Last week, not so good. So with this, um, there was a Miz and Bobby Lashley recap. Uh, Sheamus recap with Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre then has a promo. And the only bad thing about leaving windows open is that these little no seams get in the house because the screen's not big enough. But that's okay. I need the fresh air. Fresh air is good for you folks. Especially maskless fresh air. Breathe it in, baby. And yeah, without smoke, diesel fuel, or alcohol fuel, and or rubber smells. Yeah. I'm still trying to get that off of my shoes, but that's okay. That's a whole other separate issue, which you'll probably see probably on Thursday. If not, if unless I can do something magical tomorrow. We shall see. <laughs> I'll do the one video conference, turn that on, and then freaking do this video while they're talking. <laughs> that, sounds about, that sounds about on par for the way I do stuff here. Um, so then, uh, now, so Drew McIntyre shows up, then MVP shows up, he's, he's upset. This leads to the first match of Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. Starts off as a brawl, as any proper blood, Irish blood feud should. Again, this is a blood feud between the Irish, on one hand, the Scottish, on the other hand. Should always be a brawl. I think it's a good ten minutes until they get into their first wrestling move, where Sheamus does a clothesline and a pretty good arm lock. Drew hit a snap suplex. They reference... FCW, the old school territory for WWE developmental before it became NXT. It's always good to hear those references. Uh, Sheamus, he gets stuck in the ropes. And then he eats his own move, a bunch of move stealing the 10 beat of the Belfry by Drew McIntyre. Drew gets knocked out of the ring, then we go to commercial. Uh, Sheamus has Drew McIntyre in the rings. He has the Irish smile, what I call the Boston Whale Hook. Ah! That's the Boston Whale Hook, folks. I guess the Irish Shaw was just a double Boston Whale Hook. That's all. And then, ouch, Seamus. He, his lower back. I'm glad he hurt his neck and not his lower back, because I'll tell you what, that lower back bounced off. Is my cat from that angle now? Oh, well. You can almost hear because she would be, like, right, like, just over there out of camera shot. Of course, behind me, as always, is the door of wrestling with a couple NASCAR things on it now. Because, I don't know. 
I just stopped giving away stuff for a while. Sure, I want something to remember it by. Maybe one day I'll make a whole collage out of them. That does sound actually pretty cool. Especially if they're all different colors. That sounds like a plan, folks. Who knows, maybe it'll be something worth something in the future when all race cars go away. Who knows? But yeah, that, that's a whole other science fiction movie. But enough about that. Um, back to wrestling. Yeah, oh, Sheamus' is lower back goes against the table after the belly to belly. And Sheamus gets dropped again on the table. That's a pretty sturdy, sturdy table. It's good to see that. Uh, Drew hit that flying clothesline from the top rope. Uh, a little bit of back and forth there. Uh, the Glasgow headbutt again. Scottish headbutt, second strongest headbutt ever. I think I probably put, maybe it was a question... The, the, the Samoan headbutt is the most protected move in all of professional wrestling. Who knows? We'll get to that, though. Uh, then there's the top rope belly-to-belly, -belly, which always looks great. This was actually a good long match. Had a little bit of everything. I like the fact that it was drawn out. There was some moves. Uh, because the two men know each other so well, so evenly balanced. Good move thievery going on. Uh, Sheamus hits the Iris Kurtz. Backbreaker, that looked great. Drew, the future track DDT, again, they had that trade of signatures. Then they started to steal each other's signatures. Drew hit a super Irish, uh, a super white noise on the top rope. Sheamus took the Alabama slam, did that to Drew. Uh, Sheamus, and pretty good. Uh, Sheamus went for the bro kick. Drew countered that into the Claymore. That was a good match. Bravo, gentlemen. That was a good opening match. I can't fault anything they did there. This, folks, was actually, a, I think, a good surf and turf match. Naomi's backstage getting ready for her match. Naomi, uh, Naomi's there to confront her. Yeah, whatever. Uh, then we had Naomi versus Nia Jax. Nia Jax is just too big for Naomi. Naomi, that sit-down jawbreaker, looks kind of awkward. That must hurt her more than it does her opponent. That jaw against the top of your head as you sit down. I understand kind of the physics. You have momentum and the jaw still keeps on going down. Granted, your head's fairly hard. That has to hurt though, especially when you haul flat on your ass. That has to kill a tailbone. I think Hulk Hogan said he actually shrunk, I think, two inches because his spinal column just got so compressed after doing the leg drop so often. That's a terrible way to go. I have one friend with spinal issues. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. Miss Crumb, you shall get better. Doctors shall fix you. They'll make you better. They'll improve you. Indeed. Now you can't improve on, 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 on your beauty, but yes. Uh, and then uh, Nia went for the bear hug. Then the smelling headbutt. The power choke slam. Naomi wins fairly easily and convincingly. Again, at least they're making them up to be, at least they're making Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler be a big, strong tag team. It was a ham sandwich of a match. When we lead in, uh, Bobby Lashley says he wants The Miz. The Miz is, like, grabbing his groin, though. Like, the first, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe this was, I think this was a comment. Um, so it looks like he's pat, trying to pass a kidney stone. That's a painful thing to do. I've never had it. I think on the deadliest catch, we saw what the one captain was going through with a kidney stone. One of my sister's ex-boyfriends had a kidney stone. And I'm just like, that's not good. Generally, for the most part, and even though I am a doctor, I know a little bit about kidney stones. That tends to do with diets and stuff. Again, if you're eating truffle, truffle oil and mac and cheese on a fairly regular basis, eating all that rich food is not necessarily the best thing. Sometimes you have to go to good old common food, plain old mac and cheese with some crushed cheese that's on top and, and some cheddar cheese. Oh, that sounds so good. But yeah, I digress. Then we had Braun Strowman cut a promo. Uh, Shane McMahon came out. Um, Adam Pierce is going to be his tag team partner. We'll see what happens next, folks. Because it was Braun Strowman and Adam Pearce taking on the Hurt Business. Uh, Braun just wrecks both Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Woo woo! Because I have to actually, actually go woo woo! Because this is Moose. 
Braun is not Moose. Braun is woo woo. Actually, he's not even that because woo woo woo. That's the Long Island Express. Um, Zack Ryder. I forget what they call him in Impact, but whatever. I'll think of it eventually. I always, I just hate when they change their names, and you only see them a few times, so you kind of forget what who they are now. But that's okay. Uh, so with this, Braun kind of wrecks everyone. Poor Cedric gets the is the object of Braun's wrath, and that big toss he ate. Ouch! Um, Braun got shoved shoulder first into the post. The hurt business. They do the double basement dropkick on Braun, trying to get him down. That's good. Shane interferes. Um, Braun power slams. Does his running power slam to, I bl I want to say it was Cedric Alexander. Because Sheldon Benjamin was tossed out by Braun. Shane McMahon says, tag, tag, tag. So, Braun very reluctantly tags Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce is like, what? He hasn't won. Let him win. Adam Pierce really wants nothing to do to this. Nothing to do with this match whatsoever. Uh, so, Adam Pierce very gingerly gets in the ring. He gets rolled up. I wonder now. So, the Hurt Business between the tag team titles as they should. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And honestly, I know Shane O'Mac likes his WrestleMania moments. Methinks this is setting up Shane and Braun for some opening match at WrestleMania. Book it. You heard it here first. I think a lot of this has been set up for, for WrestleMania because then we had Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. Um, Elias confronts him with Jackson Riker. Uh, so the next match, of course, was Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Taking on Damian Priest. Uh, kind of a classic wrestling start. The two big men lock up. They kind of shove each other to, into uh, corners. Trying to see who the stronger man of the two is. Elias clotheslines. Damian Priest outside of the ring. Um, it took a while for the camera to realize, hey, because I swear that referee stopped his count and like kind of re restarted. It's like, hey, like like let, let me count here. It's like, no, we can't go to commercial break yet. Because this seemed like a commercial break spot, but for some reason the timing was a little wonky with it. Meh, it happens. Uh, Elias and Tate, well, actually Elias got a clothesline outside the ring, so it's the opposite of what I said. I just kind of read my notes wrong. Oh, sorry. Um, Elias eventually takes control and he gets back into the ring. Very classic WWE trope. One person goes outside, they're getting beat up, then they come back, make their comeback, and they come back to TV. Um, Jackson Riker does get his cheap shot in. That's always good. Good heel work by Jackson Riker. Good job, sir. Uh, Elias, again, goes straight to the chin lock, the reverse chin lock. Greatest heel move ever. Yeah, right there. There we go. There's a chin lock. So you can see the, the, the pain and anguish on the opponent's face. Uh, um, Priest makes a little comeback with his kicks and knees. Elias eventually kicks out of, of whatever the broken arrow is. Um, and then Trader roll up. So one, the one roll up by Priest was really sloppy looking. So it kind of knocked this match a little bit. It was an okay match. It was okay. Um, they did a little counter wrestling for a while. Damian Priest hit the um, dark side or lights out. I don't know. The side of dark. Whatever it's called. And Damian Priest wins. And another ham sandwich match. I think this is another setup though. I think this is going to set up Bad Bunny versus Elias. So this is this is like the celebrity match for WrestleMania. Bad Bunny taking on Elias. So we'll see what happens there. This is great. I did like one hour per page. That's the way it should be. And there was a Randy Orton recap. And again, I think that with, uh, with Orton with a promo, um, the... Whatever worshiper she is now, Alexa Bliss and the Pentagon with, with a non-functional jack-in-the-box summons up evil Randy Orton. And probably in a better version of it, 
we might have a Randy Orton versus Randy Orton match at WrestleMania. That's what I'm kind of thinking. This is going to be the cinematic match. Actually, most of this show is just kind of skipping over Fastlane and it's going right to WrestleMania matches, which I guess is cool. Um, that kind of means, though, for Fastlane, there's not going to be any title changes, but we could see things happen. We shall see. Then Charles, uh, The Miz versus Bobby Lashley took place. Yeah. Guess what, folks? The Miz took his belt in hand. Bobby Lashley got the count of victory. But that's the, that's the finish, baby. The Miz got count out. But you know you can't change titles on a count of victory. So even though Bobby Lashley won, he got his match. But The Miz retains his belt. Hmm. We shall see what happens. Uh, and then Charlotte, uh, so you know what? It, it was a good chuckle. Also, it was a ham sandwich. The only reason why I say it's a ham sandwich is because this is something only the Miz can actually really pull off. Then we had Charlotte Flair versus Shannon Baszler. Charlotte Flair's like turned back heel. She wants to face Asuka after Asuka gets her teeth put, her teeth put back into her head. So Shannon Baszler's kicked. Shannon Baszler, I tell you what, these WWE women, they love to talk about their botches. Nia Jax says, yeah, I'm the one that messed Becky Lynch up. Shannon Baszler said, yeah, I'm the one that messed up Asuka's teeth. I don't want to be Shannon Baszler when Asuka comes back. There might be a potato receipt in the works. Oh, good, there's my phone. Oh, that's right, I didn't check my phone all day. I would to use my phone for emergency hotspot stuff. It's never a good sign. So then the next match, it was uh, Charlotte Flair taking out Shannon Baszler. And Charlotte Flair is back to way, wearing way too much makeup. Um, I forget what uh, someone called her clay face. I said she looks, she has that plastic face way too much. And ladies, if you're out there and actually watch the show, first of all, thank you very much for watching. But uh, see, I know... There's a name for it. I don't know what it is. I don't wear the makeup. I mean, no, I mean, this is a terrible part on me because I like this. But like here, like she looks like a bad Barbie doll. And then I think in the <laughs> group chat we were, we were mentioning how we haven't seen Andrade either. Who knows? Maybe Charlotte has him captive in some basement somewhere in Minnesota. Indeed. So Char it was Charlotte Flair versus Shayna Baszler. Um, starts off as a brawl. Uh, Shayna uh, goes for a standing Americana. It's always good to see. I do like the fact, and the, the, they didn't mention this, I think, in some WWE documentary. Uh, Vince doesn't want to see Shayna become a wrestler. Vince wants Shayna to be an MMA fighter, which is good. Keep Shayna at her strengths. You keep them at their strengths, they're less likely to screw something up. Yeah, you can throw a couple wrestling stuff, wrestling things in there. Keep their core though intact. Every song just add little things to it though. Don't make don't make an MMA fighter all of a sudden become a pro wrestler. Uh, that's not good. But again, you have the MMA fighter incorporate some wrestling things, but really keep that core MMA. That's a good thing. Again, going a lot of uh, strikes, submissions. Uh, Charlotte goes for gets a comeback with a face buster. Uh, she eventually fights off Nia Jax. Of course, Charlotte got jumped too. So yeah, she wants to go after Nia Jax. Um, Charlotte then works over the leg of Shannon Baszler and then wins by natural selection. Shannon Baszler is a little high high up there for Charlotte to win just by a natural selection. Again, they are trying to tease. I think the um. Don't get him, Chispa. Attack. Um, they are trying to tease the fact that, Char that Charlotte's good, but the natural selection, Shannon Baszler is above that. If this was Billy K, yeah, winning by natural selection is fine. Not against a quality opponent like Shannon Baszler. This was a ham sandwich match. Again, another setup for WrestleMania. 
Then we have the Hurt Lucia House Party versus Matt Riddle. And Matt Riddle, I'm sorry. Taking on Retribution. Retribution's not good. You have the Predator, Casey Jones, and Burn! And like, Burn! That's when we have. Yes, I'm coming for you, Matt Riddle. Well, there can only be one Batman story in WWE, and that's Burn! There's no place for the Riddler here. Yes. Uh, Bane did that choke slam backbreaker, and then so Matt Riddle was in jeopardy for a little bit. Uh, Casey Jones eventually gets in slapjack. Lucha House House Party gets in. They do a bunch of double team moves, and they pin Retribution. Retribution loses. Ali is not happy. He berates them. Uh, I'll be honest. This was a can of soup match. I honestly wanted to get myself a glass of delicious iced tea. And then I saw Lince Dorado pin Casey Jones. Meh. Uh, Ali then berates them. Ali versus Riddle was, was actually a lot better. Riddle went like straight to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He said, screw this wrestling. I'm done with this. Straight Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu stuff. That was really good to see. Ali works over the arm. Riddle's a little bit... He actually seems quicker than, than Ali, which is some kind of uh, shocked at. Slapjack and... Well, Casey Jones and the Predator add to the distraction. And then Ali hit like, I know what, I want to say, I know he was going for a top rope backstabber, but he like missed and it was, and like, it was like a twisting, it was, it was, so if you think about it, if you go for a backstabber, you're going to fall back, fly on your back, and the guy's going to land on your knees. Well, Matt Riddle somehow went up underneath Mustafa Ali. And Mustafa Ali, instead of landing flat on his back, on top of Matt Riddle's face, all credit to Ali, kind of turned it around, kind of landed like next to Matt Riddle, but it looked like his knees kind of grazed him a little bit. So if this was, a, if this was planned and he wanted to do something new, meh. Um, if he, if it was a botch on a backstabber, man, I'll tell you what, it looked absolutely amazing. The fact that one human being can spend that much time in the air. Cause with me, I would, I would fall like a rock. I, I, I'd go up there, pull down my back. And by the time I realized what was wrong, I'd probably fall on my head and break, break my neck. So again, all props to Mustafa Ali. This match again was, was, was better. Again, the fact that they do incorporate their Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, that's really good. And, and it was just cool to see, like, a human being, like, float in the air, too. This is a cheese... This, uh, you know what? I'll be honest, though. It was a ham sandwich match. Then the main event, Bobby Lashley versus The Miz for the second time tonight. Um, Shane McMahon says, you know what? We're going to make this a lumberjack match. And I applaud the lumberjacks. Normally with the lumberjacks, there's a big schmoz outside. You have heels on one side, faces on the other. And that kind of unhappy medium in between this time the lumberjacks actually did what lumberjacks are supposed to do instead of beating up people and beating each other up they just threw Miz back in the ring whenever he tried to escape so that wasn't happening Miz tried but failed at escaping uh, the lumberjacks did their job for a change this is a really good thing to see uh, Bobby Lashley just beat down the Miz hit the flat liner the Miz tried but yeah he just annoyed Bobby Lashley he hit the um Hurt Lock on to the Miz. Miz loses his belt. He taps out. This was a great moment. Bobby Lashley looks amazing with that belt. Mainly because they, they had enough guts to, to pull the trigger on this. This was a cheeseburger match. And that was a pretty good... It was, it was a man around. It seemed to go quick though. A lot of long, um, fewer, fewer matches, longer matches though. Um, a lot less filler in between with the exception of the first 15 minutes or so. So a little bit of the schedule for this week. So this video is probably going to go up and well, well, technically later today. Um, Tuesday, go back to live streaming impact wrestling. That's always good. Wednesday will be the AEW cause that's a go home show for revolution. 
Thursday, I'll, I'm going to try to put out at least two videos on Thursday. I might get the one done earlier. I really don't know. Um, I might start to work on that during uh, Revolu uh, during AEW Dynamite, depending on stuff. Um, you'll have the Road Race road race Rage that I covered um, from NASCAR. And then it'll be the predictions. I have no idea who's going to do the predictions this time for Revolution. We'll see. I hope it's not that scary guy. The Von Breaker of Tom's. It's creepy. Uh, Friday will be a normal uh, review of...